Gaming Geek here with this review of this 3D printed sci-fi terrain set from Warlayer. Now, right off the bat, I wanna say that this model here, the spaceship is not part of it and isn't from Warlayer. I did a how to speed paint video. And if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out here. And as well, I have my Sisters of Battle Black Pink Edition from Starbreach that are showing you the scale of these models. But everything else is from Warlayer. And actually, I have bought a couple of different of their sets. And the base set here with all of these pieces is the Tower City. And I haven't even printed out half of all of the models that are available in that set. And that set is a good deal with, for only $15. You're gonna get tons of different kinds of different models. And I printed out the tower version, the circular ones here, and I really like them a lot. Now I found out about Warlayer because I was doing a Google search uh, because I needed a train for my battle report and my scenarios that I'm going through with Starbreach. And you can check out my battle report here that uses this train but I have a couple other scenarios in mind and this was really the only sci-fi train that I saw being available. And so uh, this isn't part of Tower City and so I did have to buy this train set separately, but it was only $6 for this train set, including tracks as well. And so that's a really good deal too and I think it turned out really well. I'm gonna do a separate painting tutorial for the train because I did it differently than the rest of this Tower City. And the Tower City, um, you'll see at the end of the video, I have a tutorial on how to paint it, this sort of rusty style that you see here. It's very quick and it's very fast. You get a lot of terrain done quickly. So once I went on to Warlayer's website and uh, purchased a train, I just saw all of the other awesome train that they had and so I did buy the Tower City set. In addition, I saw this amazing crane and I was like, oh, I bet I can incorporate that into being part of my scenario. And so sure enough, um, I bought that and it only cost $5 for this crane, which again is a great deal. And as you can see here, it looks really, really cool. So I'm gonna use that in a future scenario. And then I also did purchase these various shipping containers that you see here. And the one that I really needed was this, what looks like sort of a jail container because I needed that for my scenarios to hold a bunch of cows. But also the Orbital Navy shipping containers, which is only $2, comes with a wide variety of different containers. So again, that's another good deal as well. So overall, I would say that Warlayer is providing really, really good value for the money because you're getting a ton of files. I know that he did a couple of different Kickstarters and there's a whole host of other STL files that he's provided that's on his website. Again, pretty good deal. But these were the ones I needed for my scenarios moving forward with my Starbreach campaign. And so this ended up looking really good. I'm really satisfied and happy with how these prints turned out. I am printing on my Prusa MK3S at 0.2 millimeters and that brings out a lot of the detail. It can be challenging to paint 3D uh, terrain, but again, if you follow my tutorials, I think you can knock these out in a hurry. But they look awesome. I think this set, I'm super happy with it. I might go ahead and purchase a couple more because he has, I know these vats that light up with tea lights that make it look like uh, they're full of this uh, poisonous goop. I'm really impressed with the line and uh, go ahead and check them out. I'm gonna have links below in the descriptions for all of the different model sets that I got, but go ahead and go over to the website and check everything out for yourself. You know, I was really inspired. I lived in Seattle for 12 years. My regular run was to Gasworks Park and it was all of these pipes that were sort of rusted out. And so that was sort of my inspiration for the color scheme that I have with these models, but it's relatively easy to paint these. And so let's go ahead and dive right in to the painting tutorial. So after you spray paint everything with a flat coat of black, you wanna just grab this, I'm using this rockwood red or sort of a rusty red kind of color. And you, you can use a bigger brush and basically just go through and uh, 
color random parts of it with this red color. Pretty much the entire thing. And you can either dab it like this or um, you know, smooth it out a little, but you're doing it basically throughout the whole piece. And don't forget to um, get the tops as well. And if it ends up being too bright, like some of these spots, just smooth it out like some of the edges like so. And you actually want to get this a little bit more into the cracks and crevices because we're going to go over this with silver and the silver actually you want to be on top of this color uh, not the entire piece so we're still just randomly um, coloring some sections like so and then you can dab because sometimes with 3d prints it will pick up on the lines if you're dry brushing a lot. Um, so you got to be careful not to emphasize the lines with your dry brushing. And try to blend it in a little bit more. One of the things I want to say is that you're going to destroy your brush just like I did here because I was pushing a lot like this and dabbing and so just don't use a super expensive brush. I bought all of these horsehair brushes uh, in a big pack from Hobby Lobby for really cheap so uh, just keep that in mind. So now that I'm done with all of the red I'm going to go ahead and just grab some silver and what I have here is Folk art metallic gunmetal gray, but any silver will be fine. And again, I'm going to use a stiff uh, horsehair brush. And it isn't necessarily dry brushing that you're doing, but just more like uh, in spots, just putting some on. And with all of the um, these tubes, I'm going to put more of it on the tubes just to give it a different color. But in general, you're just sort of dabbing it on. It's going to be more subtle than the red, the rusty red that you put on. And just sort of put it on uh, where you want to to create some highlights here. And I focus more on the edges of the paneling because that's most likely the places where it's going to have the most wear but you can put some in the center of the panels um, again just dab it on like this and that's fine too providing some areas where paint and the rust hasn't set in and that's pretty much all you got to do is just dab it around in random places and it doesn't take as long as putting the red on. On these tops I'm going to actually put more silver on just because these are the areas where people are walking and so more of the paint 
will be rubbed off or the it won't be quite as rusty. So I'm going to put more of the silver across the tops than I would on the sides. But again, uh, this is traditional dry brushing where you're only hitting the raised spots. And just like that. And pretty easy. And then you can use other colors just to highlight if you want to add different colors to it because it is pretty plain. So here I'm just using pure gold, but you can use any other colors if you want. And what I'm going to do is just color this thing here a gold color. And again, uh, I, don't, I don't care if I'm not getting the whole thing more just spot coloring like this dry brushing like that and that just puts a different color on there so that it's the whole thing isn't just one you know this rusty um, reddish color and then silver so that's that's what you can do just to change things up a little bit so there you have it. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe. As well, check out my Patreon page and you'll have an opportunity if you become a Patreon supporter uh, to win various prizes. For this month of April 2020, we're going to be giving away this Dragon's Crest model. And so uh, go ahead and check that out. Otherwise, happy gaming and we'll see you next time.